Welcome to our presentation on how to measure a QTC. My name is Dr. Nathan Gargas, and I will guide you through this presentation, which was created by myself, Dr. Davil Nayak, Dr. Ahmed Mahmoud, Dr. Khalid Mojadidi, and Dr. Michael Kaufman. This video will not only guide you through the correct manner in which to measure a QT interval, but will also provide you with several examples in order to do so. It will also provide you with formulas in order to correct that QT interval for heart rate, and it will provide you with the maximum normal QTC for both men and women. I hope you enjoy this presentation. The QT interval is the time from the start of the Q wave to the end of the T wave. It represents the time taken to complete ventricular depolarization and repolarization. The QT interval is inversely proportional to the heart rate, meaning as the heart rate increases, the QT interval becomes shorter, and as the heart rate decreases, the QT interval becomes longer. A serious complication of a prolonged QT interval is the conversion to a lethal arrhythmia known as torsades de point. In order to take the heart rate into account, the QT is corrected for heart rate. This correction is called the QTC, or the corrected QT. This slide illustrates an example of a patient with a prolonged QT interval whose rhythm converted from sinus rhythm to torsades. For every 10 millisecond increase in the QTC duration above normal, there is a 5 to 7% increase in the risk of torsades. The upper limit of QTC for males and females is clinically important. A QTC that is greater than 450 milliseconds is considered prolonged for males, and a QTC greater than 470 milliseconds is considered prolonged for females. The EKG computer calculates the QTC, and it is reliable when there is normal T wave morphology at normal heart rates between 60 and 100. However, the computer calculated QTC may not be accurate at an elevated heart rate with abnormal T waves, prominent U waves, or if there is a T U wave complex morphology. Therefore, in the majority of situations, the QTC should be calculated manually. Now let's learn how we can accurately measure and calculate the QTC. Lead 2 or V5 are the most commonly used. We recommend using whatever lead has the most clearly defined T waves. Normally we should look at a few successive beats which should be measured and the maximum interval taken. The QT interval should not be taken off of a PAC or a PVC if possible. When there are large U waves greater than 1 millimeter that are fused to the T wave, these fused U waves should be included in the QT measurement, while small U waves and those that are separate from the T wave should be excluded. To review the EKG scale, each small box represents 40 milliseconds. Each large box, which comprises five small boxes, measures 200 milliseconds. Since the entire EKG recording is 10 seconds, the heart rate can be estimated by calculating the total number of QRS complexes and then multiplying that number by 6. Here is one example of measuring a QT interval. The measurement should begin from the start of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. Since we have one large box and four small boxes, it would measure 200 milliseconds plus 160 milliseconds, or 4 times 40, since each small box represents 40 milliseconds. This will result in a QT interval of 360 milliseconds. The maximum slope intercept method is used to define the end of the T wave. It defines the end of the T wave as the intercept between the isoelectric line 
with the tangent drawn through the maximum downslope of the T wave. The isoelectric line is defined by the TP interval, not the PR interval, which can be affected by pericarditis. So in this case, from the start of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave, we have 16 small boxes, which would be 16 times 40 milliseconds, which equals 640 milliseconds for the QT interval. So far, we have explained how to measure the QT interval. As we mentioned earlier, clinical decisions are made using the QTC, or corrected QT, which takes the heart rate into account. There are several formulas for calculating the QTC. Due to its simplicity, the Bazet formula is the most widely used one. However, it is only accurate for heart rates between 60 and 100 beats per minute. The Bazet formula to calculate the corrected QT is equal to the QT interval divided by the square root of the RR interval. Of note, there are two ways to get the RR interval. For more accuracy, the RR interval can be directly measured in the same manner as we measured the QT interval. The measured RR interval should be converted to seconds from milliseconds before using it in the formula. Alternatively, the RR interval can be calculated by using the formula 60 divided by the heart rate. The major limitation of the Bazet's QT correction is that the formula overcorrects at a fast heart rate and undercorrects at a slow heart rate. Here are some other formulas that can be used. In case your EKG shows a heart rate outside of the 60 to 100 beats per minute range, any of these formulas will provide a more accurate corrected QT interval than the Bazet formula in this range. Let's now try a few example EKGs. Before going on to the next slide, after each example EKG, please pause the video to allow yourself time to calculate the QT and the heart rate. In order to calculate the heart rate, you use the total number of QRS complexes going from left to right and multiply that times 6. This is due to the fact that the EKG recording is 10 seconds long. In this case, using limb lead 2 for example, the heart rate is equal to 12 times 6, which is equal to 72 beats per minute, given the fact that there are 12 QRS complexes in limb lead 2. At this point, please pause the video before going on to the next slide, which is the answer slide, to allow yourself time to calculate the QT. The RR interval, in this case, with a heart rate of 72 beats per minute, is 0 0.83 seconds. The square root of that RR interval is 0 0.91 seconds. In order to calculate the QRS, we will draw a line down at the beginning of the QRS and one at the end of the T wave and measure the distance between the two, which in this case is equal to nine small boxes. Thus, the measured QT would be nine times 40 milliseconds, which is equal to 360 milliseconds. The calculated QTC would then be 360 divided by 0.91 which is equal to 395 milliseconds. In this second example EKG, the heart rate using limb lead 2 is equal to 10 QRS complexes times 6, which is equal to 60 beats per minute. At this point, please pause the video in order to give yourself time to calculate the QT In this case, since the heart rate is 60, the measured QT interval will be the same as the corrected QT interval. RR is equal to 60 over 60, which is equal to 1. The square root of the RR interval is 1. The measured QT interval is 
560 milliseconds. The calculated QTC then would be 560 divided by 1, or 560 milliseconds. In this example EKG, there are 8 QRSs in limb lead 2, making the heart rate around 48 beats per minute. As we mentioned earlier, the Bizet's formula will not be accurate for heart rates less than 60 or greater than 100 beats per minute. So we should use another formula to calculate the QTC. Here we will use the Framingham formula to calculate the QTC. At this point, please pause the video to take time to calculate the QT and the corrected QT intervals. In this case, with the heart rate of around 48 beats per minute, we will use the Framingham formula to calculate the corrected QT interval. The formula will be the QTC is equal to the QT interval plus 0 0.154 times 1 minus the RR interval. The RR interval is equal to 60 divided by the heart rate, and in this case would be 60 divided by 48 which is equal to 1.25. The measured QT in this case is equal to 760 milliseconds or 0 0.76 seconds since in the Framingham formula the QT is used in seconds. Therefore the formula will be QTC is equal to 0 0.76 plus 0 0.154 times 1 minus 1.25 which is then equal to 720 milliseconds. This concludes our presentation. We hope that this exercise has helped you in two manners. First, in understanding what determines a long QT interval in men and women. And secondly, how to calculate all the above, a QT interval, an RR interval, and a corrected QT interval based on several different formulas depending on heart rate.